Okay, so the boat is acting up a little bit, and basically getting a steering failure on one side, and then it says battery voltage, and then on the other side it's saying check the EVC. So we're going to try to go in here and check the codes real quick. So this time, only the battery voltage popped up, which as you can see, we've got 13.2 volts. So there's plenty of volts. It's on the battery charger now, plugged into the shoreline. So let's see, if we see the fault, battery voltage, there's the code we're looking for. We just tapped on that twice when we went to the vault. You can see. Move on. So now we'll go try to look that up. Okay, so looking up there in the workshop manual, it's showing us that the arrow is pointing to the SCU, which is the steering control unit normally found on the transom and is used for joystick steering on this model of Volvo Penta. And what they're telling us is that there's low voltage to the unit, which could be caused by a short circuit or a fuse problem. So next question is how do we find the SCU? Workshop manual also states that the SCU, which looks like the engine PCU, is typically located on the transom. We'll look at some diagrams here in a second. Real quick, here are the definition code for the indicators that you see, the MID, PID, PPID that Volvo uses, um, along with the FMI indicators. Uh, the only one that doesn't show up here is the OCC, which actually stands for the number of occurrences of the fault. Um, and then if we see the FMI 5, which shows us the type of fault, shows us what we saw previously, that we have a voltage issue that's below normal. All right, so let's get to the diagrams. I like going to volvopenta.com slash shop and then enter my engine serial number which then displays me a list of the components associated with my engine. If I click on the electronic steering, I see that this diagram, which labels the SCU as item number five, and the power cable and fuse as items number 31 and 32. This helps us to understand what we we're looking for. Now, if we take that part number for the power cable and put it in Google, I was able to find some images that helps me understand what I'm looking for on the boat. Here we see the connector goes to the SCU and then the battery terminal as well as the inline 10 amp fuse holder. Now we know what to look for, so let's get back on the boat. The SCU, and then in here we see the red and black wires come out of there. It's even labeled for us. Power supply. And then it goes in this these wires down, down here, and I believe it comes down to this side, and you can see, so there, the 10 amp fuse. Then I think is wired back into the starter. So obviously that 10 amp fuse looks kind of like the cover was off. Might be shot, which causes all of our issues here. So let's see if we can replace that 10 amp fuse. So, 
I've tried to pull the fuse out and only part of the fuse came out, so it's definitely corroded. Let's see if I can get the other other part. in the shop, but basically I think my best bet might be to replace this whole thing ever. It's not easy to get down here. That other piece oops, it fell, but got that out of there. So let's try to clean these terminals up. Put another fuse up there and see what happens. So I have some of this battery cleaner I got at the auto store that uh, helps clean up those connections. So I'm going to spray some of that. Our part here. See the fuse is cracked, but you know, it was severely corroded. Corroded. Let's turn on our battery. Okay, as you can see, that engine seems to be happy now. No more error, port, starboard, same thing. Just turn the blower on, so I'm going to let that run for a few minutes, then we'll start her up. <coughs> 